What's going on, guys? All right, I got another PS Vita, uh, three point six zero official firmware Hentaku exploit, uh, the R seven installation. Uh, after you've done this, the link to the molecular shell that uh, is the FTP client that we can use to uh, have file browsing and copy and pasting files uh, using this FTP client with our PS Vita. Uh, the link to that video will be below in the description so you guys can follow this if you have 3.60 official firmware and uh, get molecular shell so you can install the Vita shell that I'm going to use in this video to install this uh, VPK package file file I'm going to have you download is this one right here, PCSX Rearmed VPK. Uh, this is basically, um, it is the uh, RetroArch emulator uh, for uh, PlayStation 1. Um, the uh, RetroArch, uh, oh my god, wow, lost my train of thought, sorry about that. RetroArch emulation for ps1 titles and uh, the ps1 titles that we will be using uh, for an example in this video i'm going to be using the rom file of uh, crash bandicoot we will be taking the dot uh, bin files the bin files that's what we're going to be looking at uh, so that's how that's going to work so i'm just going to minimize that for now uh, what you're going to do uh, if you follow my video on molecular shell and you also follow my video on the vita shell uh, first and foremost, this is only going to work with your official firmware um, 3.60 on the PlayStation Vita. If you have anything above that, the only thing that you can potentially do is uh, run your virtual half byte loader or uh, install the uh, patched version of Adrenaline custom firmware uh, that is used to emulate over the game uh, or ARC custom. I don't know if ARC uh, has made one for uh, 3.61 or 3.63 but uh, I will be researching that in the next couple of days, so uh, we'll take care of that. But uh, so what you're gonna do after you have your Vita shell or molecular shell installed, and if you're using molecular shell, just real quick, just show you uh, through here, uh, you're just gonna locate your server and open that up and you're gonna see these directories and we're gonna be going to the UX0 directory. Uh, if you're using your Vita shell, just go ahead and plug in your uh, PS Vita. And once you do that, just activate your Vita shell and start it up. Anything that you have running is going to be automatically closed. And just hit select inside your uh, Vita shell to activate your USB connection. This right here is the UX0. Uh, root that you're going to be looking at. Not all the folders will be displayed. For example, if you had to get to your app folder, you can just type in an app folder and you will get to your application folder. So all the files are still there. You just need to know the parent directories. So what we're going to be looking at is the um, the root of the UXO on your PS Vita. What you're going to do is you're going to take this file that I have you download again, the PCSX rearmed VPK and just drag and drop and copy that over. Um, and I've already done this, as you can see right there. So I'm not gonna copy this over, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's gonna be there. And the file size is gonna be roughly about 6.5 megabytes, as you can see here. Scroll over, 6.43 megabytes and uh, just for how I'll just scroll over this real quick, 6.43, and that's that. Now, for ROM placement for your PS1 emulations, uh, what you're going to be looking at is you're going to open up the data folder on the UX0 root. Double click on that and open that up. You're going to create a folder called RetroArc. Um, this right here. Uh, you can either do this manually or you can install the VPK and let it do it automatically for you. Uh, I say that would be the best way of doing it and then just reconnect into Vita Shell. Uh, but you can make these folders right now. You can make the RetroArch folder in the data folder on the UX0 root, open that up, and then just make a folder called Downloads. Downloads is where we're going to be putting our bin files. So I'm just going to take the uh, Crash Bandicoot 
uh, bin file right here and I'm going to copy that over to my uh, PS Vita. Now doing large files like this I would recommend using Vita Shell just because you won't run into any connectivity problems with the FTP client that the molecular shell has. Small files, molecular shell works pretty good but using big files like this uh, I'd recommend using Vita Shell and again uh, you can go to the molecular shell video um, in the description below there will be a link and I will also have the link for the Vita Shell as well uh, so you can get both those videos in the best of both worlds utilizing the Henkaku exploit so after this recopy is over we're just going to do a quick little recap and then we're going to go to the PS Vita and I will show you how to set up this emulation program on your PS Vita running 360 official firmware so once that copy is over I'm just going to exit this real quick Exit this out right here, and okay, so we have our Crash Bandicoot Warped Bin, uh, which is now on our Downloads folder inside of our RetroArch folder that is inside the Data folder that is located on the UX0 root. And again, the file above the PC SX rearmed VPK is on the root of your UX0 as well on your Vita. So once that's all said and done. We can just go to the Vita and I'll show you the rest of the steps. All right, so here we are at the Vita. I'm just gonna load this up real quick right here. And you can see that I'm still inside my Vita shell. So I'm just gonna hit circle to cancel that connection of the Vita shell and it will refresh. As you can see, my Spyro the Dragon bin is inside my UX0 data slash retro arc slash downloads folder. Now, like I was saying before, if you don't feel comfortable making these folders, no worries. We can just go to the UX0 root right here, which is the installation of this emulator, if I can get to it, and just scroll down till you find the PCSX underscore rearmed dot BPK. Hit X on this VPK, it's going to ask you if you wish to install this package. Hit X for yes. Now, you might be sitting here for probably about 45 seconds, and then another screen is going to pop up, because this is actually a fairly large emulator. Um, what you're going to be doing is, once that comes up, it's just going to ask you to confirm one more time. Hit X to confirm, and it will continue to install the emulation program. Once you do that, we're just going to double check and make sure we'll go to our data folder and we're going to scroll down to our retro arc, which is right there. Scroll down to retro arc and then scroll down to your downloads and just double check and make sure that bin is in there like so. So we're going to hit the home button here and I'm just going to close that out and retro arc bubble will be on your screen. So just go ahead and start that up. Now, once it's started up, it's going to boot up. It's going to kind of look like PlayStation Portable slash PS3 custom firmware. Uh, so what you can do now is you can scroll over to the settings. If you go to the driver, now circle is the confirmation button and X is the back button. So have that in mind. So hit circle and X to go back and forth. Now, the only thing that you're going to be really looking at uh, to be concerned about is this joypad driver. The joypad driver is the touchpad on the back of the Vita. Uh, that has uh, some effect in certain games. Basically, all it is is its camera rotation. If you hold down with two fingers on the back left of the joypad, you will start to rotate to the left. And if you do it to the right, you will start to rotate to the right. If you want, just scroll left to right uh to make it null which means it's inactive or back to the vita driver and then just hit x to go back and confirm all your settings and inputs there is no overclocking in this emulator so we don't have to worry about any of that either so last but not least all we have to do now is load the content so hit circle to load content hit circle to select file what you're going to do is scroll down to your ux0 the ur0 that is the system memory so you don't really have to worry about that if you have a memory stick in hit circle on the ux0 and we're going to scroll down to data hit circle on data and then scroll down to your retro arc folder hit circle on that to confirm the entry to that folder and scroll down to downloads then finally hit that and scroll down to whatever rom you want to load uh, for this one, I guess I'll just load up the Crash Bandicoot, hit circle, 
and it will start to load the ROM. No BIOS found, expect bugs. That's gonna come up every single time unless you have the uh, other file that is with the DLCs uh, that is an EC file. But as you can see, this allows us to play. Ooh, let's start, thank you. This enables us to play. Our PS1 ROMs uh, without having to use the virtual half byte loader and you're able to play your PS1 games on the uh, PS Vita using the RetroArch emulation on 360 official firmware after using the Henkaku exploit. So thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoy and there will be more emulators, homebrews and cracks and all that fun jazz soon to come. So. Like I said, all the links will be in the description below, except for this Crash Bandicoot ROM, because that would be a copyright problem, and wherever you get your ROMs from, uh, that's on you. Alright guys, enjoy.